This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 642, Four Reasons to Make Yourself a Ton of Friends, by Greg Audino of gregaudino.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to ORD. I am your host, Greg Audino, and I am here every Monday to Friday to narrate some of the best relationship content we can find for you online. And once in a while, the producers decide that my own content is even passable. So today, for the first time on this show anyway, we will be reading one of my own essays on friendship, which is a little bit of a different speed for the show, which is good. Quick note before we begin, uh, if you are on Instagram and would like to be notified of our motivational posts over there, be sure to follow us at at old podcast. We are posting all kinds of quotes on there. It's a really great place to have all of our author's wisdom in one place. So. Give it a look see. For today, here is an episode on what you can get out of having plenty of friends, besides the obvious, according to me. Let's hear what this fool has to say and start optimizing your life. Four Reasons to Make Yourself a Ton of Friends by Greg Audino of gregaudino.com. Surprising title, right? I assume most of you are getting to the age, or have long since gotten to the age, where you realize that life is far more fulfilling with a small group of close friends you can really count on than it is with an endless list of friends that you don't really know that well. If you haven't figured this out yet, your time will come soon. Now, don't get too excited, you washed-up jocks and cheerleaders out there. This article is not about giving anybody a pat on the back for being popular. However, It's also not saying that partying with a different group every night doesn't have its benefits. For all the feelings of loneliness that can come from not spending time with a few people you really feel at home with, there is also a lot to be learned from being exposed to a larger group of acquaintances that you might not realize. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Reason number one stems from a fantastic quote I once heard. It goes something like, If all of your friends have the same political beliefs, you're in the wrong group of friends. That's brilliant, and for as culturally appropriate as that is in this political climate, the principle of this idea really stretches far beyond politics and can generally be summed up into the more friends you have, the more ideas you're exposed to. Friendships are a beautiful thing, and the strongest ones are usually cultivated over a number of years and through a lot of time spent together, good and bad. When friends have been together so much, however, shared a lot of the same history and have learned a lot about life through one another, a lot of behavior will be replicated between them. There is nothing wrong with this, but the stronger those ties are and the stronger faith one has in that way of life, the more difficult it is to be receptive to new and potentially very healthy ways of thinking and being that could very well change your life in a positive way. There is a lot of personal growth that comes from being engaged in back and forths with those that we either disagree with or those that are trying to introduce us to new ideas, and simply put, we're most apt to finding ourselves in those discussions when we're intermingling with more people from more walks of life. Reason number two is perhaps the most practical of all, and that is that spreading yourself thin with a large group of friends for a long period of time garners you a better understanding of loss and transition. Look, even if you aren't terribly close with all of your so-called friends, there will be moments in which you find yourself reflecting on good times you had with them. These moments are likely to come to you when those times are no longer possible, whether it be because of a falling out, one of you moving to a new area, your friend passing away, or simply losing touch. These reflections can leave you feeling sad, of course, But if you're constantly surrounding yourself with a ton of friends, these types of instances will happen with great frequency and, over time, will leave you with more of a lesson than pain. That lesson is the reality of loss and transition in life. To constantly have people coming and going will eventually help you grasp the fact that all things are coming and going in life and that there is more value, truth, and efficiency in enjoying the gifts of each chapter while you're in them rather than developing too much attachment and clinging to things that will someday be away from you regardless of how hard you try to make them stay. Unlike reasons 1 and 2, reasons 3 and 4 work more from the inside out. In fact, reason number 3 circles back to the feelings of loneliness I mentioned before. Feelings of loneliness most often start for people when they don't feel as though they have a core group that they can really trust in and that really cares about them. 
These people may feel they have no friends, or even too many friends. Like all curses, however, this curse has a blessing, and that blessing is that feelings of loneliness help you better understand and sympathize with others who feel the same way. For as much as we all like to feel in tune with the world, the truth is that we're all severely limited by our own circumstances, so much so that we assume the commonalities in our own lives are much, much more normal in the lives of others than they truly are. What this can mean for people that have a tight-knit group of friends and are less likely to feel lonely is that they may have a more difficult time understanding loneliness in others as it is a more foreign concept to them. Yet feelings of loneliness, which can spiral quite easily into more severe forms of depression, are being faced by many in this world, and the ability to understand, be patient, communicate, and bond with people feeling loneliness in their times of need is an invaluable tool for both parties. Finally, there's reason number four, which likely takes the most patience, introspection, and ability to be honest with oneself of all. And it can be found by flipping to the first chapter in your psychology book. Behavior reinforcement, in short, is the principle that as long as the behavior you exhibit receives positive feedback, you'll continue to exhibit it. We all wear masks, though. It's easy to find ourselves being one person in front of our mom, another in front of our dad, another in front of our siblings, another in front of our local friends, and another in front of our friends at work. You get it. The more friends we have, especially if they aren't unified into many groups, the more personas we will display. Some will see our shy side, others will see our confident side, a third will see our contemplative side, and so on. Once you're able to sit back, identify this, and really reflect on the masks you're wearing and the roles you're playing, you're granted the ability to hone in on any number of conclusions about yourself, thereby taking a step at understanding yourself better. You might find yourself having thoughts like, why do I get so tense and quiet when this group is discussing religion? Do I need to reevaluate the beliefs I was raised with? Look at how good my stories are in front of these people. Do I have untapped potential as a speaker or a poet? I tend to tell a lot of white lies within that group. I've never been a liar. What about the environment they create is making me do that? The ultimate takeaway from all of these reasons is that each person you have a relationship with, no matter how small, has the power to teach you something whether or not you realize it. There is a lot to be learned about the world and about oneself when in contact with a large group of people. Though you can only fully relate to a small group, that's not a reason to turn yourself away from or resist interacting with new people you may cross paths with. As tides turn and people change, they might just prove themselves to be more meaningful than you'd expect. You just listened to the post titled, Four Reasons to Make Yourself a Ton of Friends, by Greg Audino of gregaudino.com. You know, guys, on both Optimal Relationships Daily and Optimal Living Advice, there's a lot of talk about the immense value of therapy, and one of the most convenient ways to get therapy, the future of therapy really, is BetterHelp. BetterHelp offers online counseling and therapy with licensed therapists from wherever you are and around your schedule. They have counselors specializing in depression, stress, anxiety, self-esteem, anger, grief, and so much more, and they make it super convenient in that there are four communication modes. There's text, there's chat, phone, and video, not to mention it's available on desktop, mobile web, Android, and iOS apps. Anything you share is confidential, and it is not a crisis line. This is professional counseling and therapy with licensed therapists, which is not only important but also affordable, as BetterHelp has financial aid available. As a matter of fact, Optimal Relationships Daily listeners get 10% off the first month with discount code ORD. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash ORD. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with the counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash ORD. And I have that linked in this episode's description. Oh, guys, how would I do? Oh, God. Hee hee. Look, I understand that this is not easy for everyone to make a ton of friends, but all of the material on my site and all of the questions I answer on Optimal Living Advice and all of my life coaching clients, the object is always to help people see the other side of the equation, the light in the dark and the dark in the light, the part that's easy to miss, and often not sympathized with, 
are those who indeed do have many friends, as it's easy to forget that this can be a lonely lifestyle, as we've talked about today. So, this one was for you, but let's face it, they're all for you. They're all for all of you. I love all of you people, equally. Before I get teary-eyed, we're going to sign off on today's episode. Thank you for joining me here once again. I will be back tomorrow with a book excerpt on dodging emotional vampires. Bring your garlic. I think that's the thing that shoes vampires away. I don't know. Anyway, you don't want to miss it. So I will see you there where your optimal life awaits.